In this video, we're going to be discussing how to test your water pump to make sure that it's working properly. Every year, thousands of water pumps are replaced on engines where the water pump's actually working. And the reason is usually the owner or the mechanic suspects them to be the cause of an overheat for their engine. But what most people probably don't know is that you can actually test the water pump to see if it's operating normally. And this is regardless of whether it's a diesel, a gas, belt-driven, or gear-driven water pump. And the reason for this is they all basically work the same. Now what we're going to be testing is a C15 gear-driven diesel engine water pump here. And basically all you need to do is find a port that is on the outlet side of the water pump. The oil cooler ports are a good place. And you don't want to do this after the thermostats. So this is a good place, any of these three ports. Now you might be thinking, yes, everyone knows there's pressure in the radiator, but this is different pressure. Your cap pressure is static pressure, whereas your water pump is actually the pressure in the cooling system that's running throughout the engine. And it's going to be higher than the cap pressure. And you'll see that. So most engines are going to have a set pressure. Now you can see that it has to be at a certain RPM at a certain temperature. So we're going to have it 1400 engine RPM at operating temperature, which would be about 195 degrees. And we're going to be looking for about 15 PSI. So the first thing we need to do, at least what I did, is I pulled a vacuum on the cooling system. And the reason for this is I'm going to be removing one of those plugs and I don't want to lose a bunch of coolant. So I'm going to be using a CompuCheck fitting here, the same style fittings that are used on the fuel system on these engines. So I'm going to remove one of these plugs here. Now the reason I'm pulling a vacuum is because if I removed this plug and there was no vacuum on this system, you would lose a lot of coolant very quickly. But by pulling a vacuum on the system, it'll give me a little bit of time to remove the plug and not lose as much coolant as I would as if I just pulled the plug. So going to pull this plug and quickly get the new fitting on as fast as possible. Now you see I get a little bit of time, then it starts leaking. So that's a, I lost about a couple ounces there. I would have lost a lot more if I had just pulled it without pulling a vacuum. And this makes much less of a mess. So once this is installed, of course you're going to tighten the fitting with a wrench. You don't just want to put it on hand tight. And once that's set up, you're going to use a hose and a low pressure gauge to test our water pump pressure here. Now our engine is cold and it's idling and we're going to look at the pressure. We're showing about a little less than zero PSI. Now this gauge is a vacuum and pressure gauge and it tends to read about three PSI low. I had a, the exact same gauge before and I replaced it because it would always read about three PSI low and now this one's doing the same thing. I am not replacing it again. I just know that it reads a little bit low. So remember we need to set it to a specific RPM and we have to have it at a specific temperature. So you can set your RPM if you have a cruise control most of the time with the cruise control, even if you're not moving. So we're gonna set it up with the set resume switch here to 1400 RPM. And then we just have to get the engine up to around 195 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're 1400 and take a look at our temperature here. Uh, it's not up to temp yet. We're only about 170, 175. But we can look at our pressure gauge. Pressure's up, so we're at 8 PSI on the gauge. So we have to add 3 PSI, like I mentioned, so we're at about 11. I remember specification is 15. Okay, so taking our reading here with the engine temp at 195 degrees, and we are just over 12 PSI, but you have to remember you have to add 3 PSI to this. So we're just over 15 PSI. Now this means our water pump tests good, and the customer came in because he thought he had a bad water pump, so we've saved him the expense of that water pump replacement. Now what is causing the overheat? Well, I had a hunch, and that hunch was he has compression in his cooling system, which can definitely cause a problem in the cooling system and cause overheats. And that leads us to... So we had to pull the cylinder head and we found a bad head gasket. And what you're looking at here is the fire ring and you can see part of it's much darker than the rest of the firing. This is actually a bad head gasket. Not all head gaskets are just blown out and missing chunks. This means compression was getting into the cooling system. Thanks for watching.